Nini, everyone, Zabora here. Um, so I'm personally convinced that TikTok, specifically Witch Talk, is a platform for fat, ill-bred boys. You know there's people that actually try to teach things on this platform? I mean, that's so ridiculous to me. I don't know. Um, Blue Sage and I kind of threw ideas around a while back when he was talking about how much he didn't like Witch Talk um, before this whole Hex to Fae thing happened. And we kind of threw some ideas uh, about uh, maybe sharing spells on the platform for, like, a more advanced person who doesn't need their handheld to be told, okay, this herb means this, this herb means that. You are you know what that herb means. You know why you're putting it in that spell. There's, I, I'm sure I could, like, whittle it down in, because it has to be 60 seconds, right? I'm sure I can whittle it down to being bare bones to allow someone who's a little bit more advanced in their understanding of, of spellcraft um, to utilize a spell that I, I could maybe share in video format in 60 seconds. And they could personalize it to their liking. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. I'll upload the video here to my YouTube channel just so you, just so you guys can check it out. Um, to see what you guys think. It's just, I, I created a TikTok I did to kind of test that out last night. And in the first six hours, I had 400 views on three different videos and over 160 something likes. And that's just absolutely ridiculous. The videos that I created were just nonsense and people were clicking on them. They're like, Ooh, what's this? Ooh, what's this? Ooh. I mean, it was like, click, 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 click. I mean, it feels exactly like clickbait because if you did not have context to what those videos were, um, about, you have no idea what it is. And a few people were commenting, what is this? What is this? What is this? I'm like, if you don't know what it is, why the fuck are you clicking on it? But, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to kind of do a little test run to see um, if I could find this as a viable platform to to my benefit, so I could actually find something positive in this thing that I hate so much. Um, so we'll find out. We'll I'll let you guys judge to see if I if I produce enough information in a sixty second video about a, a spell that I create. Um, I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway, um, so about that fat ill bred boy comment. So I came across this user who's actually trying to peddle these books. Grimoire of Santa Morte? Are you kidding me? There's so much wrong with these. They're, they're really bad books. There's, there's a lot wrong with, with the, um, with the, uh, the rituals and the concepts of, of La Santa Muerte in these, in these books. The author gets a lot wrong. Um, on page six of of this this first book the first uh, part 1 volume 1 whatever it is the author states one of the common misconceptions about la santa muerte who she does not call or he i don't know what the if they're male or female but the author does not call um santa muerte la santa muerte which is one of the really big red flags for true practitioners because true practitioners follow Mexican folk magic and Mexican folk magic um you know the language is derivative of Aztec, Incan, Mayan and Spanish and that Spaniard um language they have la and le similar to French they have uh je and I think and le or la I think it's la and je Jeffrey. Yeah, I think that's what it is. But anyway, they're they're basically assigning gender to things. So fire would be masculine, but ice cream would be feminine, you know. Um so they would say La Santa Muerte because it's feminine, La Santa. She's a woman, La Santa Muerte. Um so that's that's the first thing. But page 6, let's move on. <clears throat> On page six, the author states, one of the common misconceptions about La Santa Muerte is that she must have African or Afro-Caribbean origins, despite the fact that Mexico never engaged in the African slave trade. Consequently, most Mexicans have no direct relationship ethically, culturally, or radically with Africa. There are no African or Afro-Caribbean influences on Santa Muerte's origins. 
So um, that's like saying South Carolina and Louisiana had nothing to do with the slave trade because Mexico had the second largest black slave population in the Western Hemisphere after Brazil and the single largest free black population um, up until like 1810 where blacks outnumbered whites in Mexico. You can check out Bennett's Africans in Colonial Mexico, Absolutism, Christianity, and the Afro-Creole Consciousness, 1570 to 1640. You can check out Bristol's Christians, Blasphemers, and Witches, Afro-Mexican Ritual Practice in the 17th Century, and Vincent's and Rostal's Black Mexico, Race and Society from Colonial to Modern Times. If a piece of information this major is overlooked... Imagine what else this book just got downright incorrect. So, um, if you're actually interested in La Santa Muerte, um, I'm going to give you some, some references here. You should check out Devoted to Death by Andrew Chestnut. La Biblia de la Santa Muerte by Skullduggery Emporium. Or, you can check out the doctoral essay uh, that it's... I believe it's been published now by Eric, uh, Bra- uh, ooh, how do you say his name? I want to say it's Brayalt of Arizona State University, B-R-E-A-U-L-T, and uh, that is a dis- doctoral dissertation on La Santa Muerte. Uh, another red flag for me was the fact that they called this a grimoire, which is more of a European kind of tie to a magical spell book and I don't know for me that kind of just that sets off red flags because that's more like Celtic and and less Mexican or African kind of folk saint that was um once an Aztec goddess so I know I just made the I know I just made the um the case for uh Spaniard, the Spanish language coming from Europe, but, um, because you have the law and stuff like that, but, but for me, it just, um, it seems a little weird. It, it almost feels intrusive and new age to put the word grimoire next to La Santa Muerte, and it feels a little lacking not to include that law in, in her title, because that is her title. Um, I don't know, for, for me, I have no problem with the the people who want to use this platform to teach because ultimately I do try to want to try that but uh, I don't think I think that's kind of a um maybe a pipe dream you know like I don't I'm not I'm not putting too many too many eggs in the basket before you know I'm not counting counting too many chickens before they hatch kind of thing um I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket <sighs> that's what the sayings are damn it <laughs> anyway yeah, I, I, I just, ugh, I just don't have high hopes for this, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot anyway. So yeah, that's it for tonight, guys. Sanate.